Good morning, everybody. Okay, I'm making a video here to talk about and to show you guys how I'm growing the chia. Okay, you've heard of chia seeds. Salvia hispanica. This stuff, small seeds here, are um, indigenous to North America. They were grown back a long time ago in the days of the Aztecs. See, this was a staple food before the con conquistadors came over from Spain and uh, made it illegal to grow this stuff. They were uh, part of their genocide agenda. This was a major like source of protein that the warriors, the Aztec warriors and these people would eat. It's like five grams of protein per two tablespoon, right? Two tablespoons of this, five grams of protein. It's got like fiber, 20% uh, calcium, 15% iron, and it's got omegas. You see like this, you can't see this, but when you wet this seed, there's like a uh, mucilaginous, uh, it's like a uh, slime go, like starts to form around the seed and that slime are, is like omega fats. It's like a fatty substance. And if you know about omegas, you know it's good for you. So what I did is I got these seeds, okay? And I spread them on the ground here. I think it was January, April, April, something like that. Maybe a bit later. And um, I basically, I, uh, this is a grass here, okay? This is like a huge area, it was just grass. So I had to like disc the grass up and then I tilled it and I put some wood chips. Um, some ramiel chipped wood. Those are the small branches of trees that are chipped up. I put that in the soil and then I put the seeds. Um, I made other videos about ramiel chip wood. I'm not going to talk about it here but so here's what's going on. See like how dense it grew and I didn't do anything here. I did not uh, weed. I didn't do anything. It was this the canopy cover here is so dense that nothing grew except for this chia and right now we're October and it's flowering and there's always full of butterflies around here but you see the pod and that's where these seeds are going to be in these pods are going to be full of seeds and all you need to do for chia is just you just put a bucket underneath and you whack it, you know, and the seeds fall in the bucket. That's really all you need to do. And, um, yeah, this is one of the superfoods. And so it's not a grain like wheat. It's more like, it's, it's a seed, right? Um, so it doesn't have the gluten that you'll find in wheat. And um, what else about this? Uh... So you could sprout, you could eat the seeds, you could make like a porridge, you could grind it with a, por um, a mortar and a pestle, you could grind it into like a, f a flour and make, um, and make some sort of breads or like whatever you want, you could make some kind of pancakes. Uh, Bannock, <laughs> and then uh, you could eat the. You could make a tea with the leaves. Look at this one. How big this one is. It's gonna. This one's gonna have a lot of seeds. Now I suspect the um, the soil here wasn't very rich. It's basically a sandy, very sandy soil sitting on top of red clay, it's called an ur urtisol. And the clay is just, it's just like, 
years of weathering have pushed all of the organic matter down and you're left with mostly sand so that's why I put in some some wood chips to try they're gonna break down and bring some organic matter and there's going to be um, all sorts of uh, bugs in there that are going to break down the fun see the fungi are going to break down the wood chips and then things are going to eat the fungi and then the whole chain of life is going to uh, get activated and produce uh, some fertility so I think that this is basically what you're seeing here is a very poor sandy soil no fertilizer and I did not water like this uh, this chia patch because chia is drought resistant isn't that wonderful I mean what a great crop it is because you like you don't need to do anything but put the seeds in <laughs> and then um, this is gonna produce a lot of seeds okay like more seeds than we could eat so I'm going to grow the patch next year bigger than this here and I'm just going to keep like growing this patch and grow more and more of this chia. So there you go, um, chia seeds. Uh, like uh, we put it in our oatmeal, you could, you could eat it raw, you just could like, you know, you could just pop those seeds in your mouth and chew on them. Um, some people make tapioca, like tapioca pudding because of that slime that that's kind of like forms around the seeds when it's wet. And then um, I'm sure you could go on the internet and find a lot of stuff they could do with chia. And it's like, um, I also tried this year to grow quinoa, which is another superfood that the, uh, I think the Maya, Mayans or the and the Aztecs used to eat until it was banned. They would um, burn all the fields, uh, and then they would um, kill anybody who grew it. And actually, this stuff kind of like disappeared for 400 years, and just until like recently. And um, I guess some of the natives down there were just kept kept harvesting it in secret for all these years and you know and um, and now it's like it's in the, the whole foods like supermarket it's like a health food now and it costs a fortune this thing here is like anywhere from eight to like twelve dollars okay this is eight to twelve dollars and you know they're gonna start to mess around with this they're gonna start to grow this with uh, chemical fertilizers and they're gonna start to like uh, they're gonna start to make this into like some sort of poison <laughs> food so so you just grow your own basically you know just go in your backyard and grow it thing is this though what I've uh, learned about it is see we're October and it's just and it's just now making seed now so it takes a long time for it to make the seeds so if you don't have a long growing season you know if you're up north then you might want to grow quinoa um, if you're down south then chia is a better bet and um, you could grow armorant which is another superfood and uh, but the Armorant grows really well around here. <laughs> so much so that it's actually like, I was surprised this year because I put some some armorant seeds. Um, actually, I put them beside this one, this patch here. <laughs> and uh, all the um, the beetles ate, ate the, all the armorant, they loved it. But what happened is that I, um, and you can't really see now, but here I had some uh, black-eyed peas growing, and and then uh, wild armorant, wild green armorant sprouted all over the place. And so it's local to here. It's like a, a quote, weed. 
So I, I, I'm done like trying to grow armorant. It's a weed. Every year it pops up. There's tons of it everywhere. So I've got the the the, the armorant growing. This patch of quinoa. See, I'm not going to take uh, this patch here of chia. Um, I'm not going to take all the seeds. I'm basically going to uh, let some fall on the ground, and th th it'll come back like by itself. <laughs> so and. That's what I'm gonna do. You know, I'm, I'm gonna let this stuff come back by itself, and I'll, if I want to grow the patch in that direction, I'll just keep putting more and more seeds out there. So yeah, this is a beautiful day today. It's a uh, October here in Mississippi, and uh, this was my uh, peanut patch. Um, First time growing peanuts. Actually did did pretty good. I mean I mean pretty good according to me is not the same thing as pretty good according to uh, the the um, industry. <laughs> pretty good according to me is like I got some peanuts, you know. <laughs> it's not like I'm I'm I'll be able to go uh, to make like tons and tons of this stuff and then sell it on the market. And I don't really care about selling this stuff. See I I um I just tossed peanuts all over the place and it grew with all the wild plants and now I um I mowed it and I tilled it a few days ago. Now I'm just gonna go around and pick as much of the peanuts I can and leave some in the ground so they'll come back next year. I, I had some uh wasn't supposed to do a tour here, but like I've had some uh, sweet potatoes in here. This is like um, sweet potatoes, and then when they when I harvested the sweet potatoes, I put in some uh, green onions. These uh, green onions are just some of the. Uh, look at that! The sweet potato um, are like popping up all over the place. <laughs> But they won't make it, like winter will knock them down. So I think this is some green armorant right here. Right, so, yeah, but winter's coming, it'll knock all that down. But not this here, these, uh, these green onions will survive. I'm gonna have more green onions than I could shake a stick at. Uh, but I keep the, um, I keep some bulbs and uh, then I just replant them somewhere else and just keeps going on and on. So yeah, that that's what, uh, that's what I have going now. All right, there, see, from afar, that's my little patch there. Super easy to grow, doesn't require water, doesn't require anything. Five grams of protein per two tablespoons. And um, it's beautiful. Butterflies love it. Look at that. Huh? Hey, it's doing its job. <laughs> All right, folks, that's it. It's really easy. Do it. Bye bye.